What's going on, Bohemia? Come on. Tonight is amazing. We're behind a fucking Applebee's. Get any better than this shit. Come on. I got it. All good. All good here. Anybody in here in your 40s and thought you were in your 20s, you'd be successful in your 40s, become a UPS driver at a farming mill, get high on cocaine and drunk, smash through the back of six cars, get fired, become a comedian, get booked here tonight, nobody else, just me? Cool. <laughs> True story, right through the fucking windshield, that left with a pension, that's what Brown could do for me. What do we eat here? What are you guys eating here? It smells nice. Huh? Food's good here. Way better. I, I had lunch. I didn't uh, have lunch at a fine dining establishment like this. I had lunch at a shithole in Bayport. <laughs> I uh, went in there. I made a poor choice in the menu. I wound up sitting in the bathroom stall, sitting down. People came in the bathroom after me. There was conversations going on. These conversations had topics, substance, intelligence, and I realized I was taking a shit in the ladies' room. <laughs> There's nothing smart going in the men's room, guys. You know what I know? I'm 50 years old and I have friends that watch fucking wrestling. That's how I know. <laughs> Yeah. This isn't a real sport. It's a horrible television show with a guy with glitter and sequins and a mullet for some reason. If you guys love wrestling and you're from Selden. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're a fucking loser that lives in your mother's basement. I used to love wrestling, then I graduated fourth grade and discovered pussy and beer and I stopped watching wrestling. I'm a big boy now, all grown up. No more wrestling with Terry. I don't play video games either. You anybody in here between ages 20 and 55, you play video games? Kill yourself in the fucking parking lot right next to the dumpster out there. That's why your wife stopped blowing you, not because she got married, waka waka. Because your name is Chris from Center Reach with freckles, and you have a fucking mortgage, and you play Halo because you're a jerk off. Oh, the seventh level of Halo. You didn't kill a terrorist, Chris. You killed a fucking pixel with cheese doodle dust in your fat belly button ring. Last video game I played was called Spy Hunter. It was actually an arcade game in a Farmingville deli. It was 1987 because I was 14 and I got a hand job under the Sagamore Junior High bleachers. And I never played fucking video games ever again. I'm an adult and I went to college. I don't think anything guys my age do. When I go to all the bars in Rakankama, Parsnips, and fucking shenanigans, and Tobins, when I go there, I don't put the entire uniform of the team that I'm watching on TV thinking that I am a Met. You didn't make the team, okay? You're a chubby plumber from Chautauqua. You're not on the team. You didn't make the team in high school either. That's why your father hates you and thinks you're gay. Stop living vicariously through sports idols. They tap their buddies. They, they coach at the television. They go, oh, you know what he should have done right there? She, Tom, the sheetrock guy from this concert. What should the coach have done? You know the coach that makes $8 million a season? Well, you're pulling up here, playing quick draw, avoiding your wife with chalky fingers and a shitty van in the parking lot? Because you hire Mexicans on Portion Road in Farmingville? <laughs> fucking hate sports. Hate sports. Sports is useless. You know why I hate sports? I grew up a Mets, Jets, Islander fan. My season's over in four and a half weeks. Yeah, see, that, that hat, that, 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 these are the people, that's the guys who win. I was a Mets fan. I was done. Mathematically eliminated from the playoffs by, like, what, late May? The Mets fans, they did it this year. Well, this is the year. They, they win three games out of the spring break. And they're like, this is the year. It's never the fucking year. Wake up. It's not 73 or 86 or 69. It's never the fucking year. And Jets fans, you guys still wear your green hooded sweatshirt to a Miller's Ale House across from the mall every Sunday thinking you're going to win? The Jets haven't won a Super Bowl since the, the year we landed on the fucking moon. Does the name Namath and Armstrong mean anything? Show Namath and Armstrong, the guy who supposedly jumped on the fucking moon? 
You're never gonna win. Burn the fucking sweatshirt, Jets fans. It's over. Stop it. Burn it. I have to be a, a Mets Jets Islander fan. It's the rules. Right? You know, you see that in New York. No. Yankee fans, right? Puerto Rican, Italian, blacks. Mets fans, Irish and Jewish. That's why when you go to City Field, all you see is freckles and yarmulkes everywhere. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Reason number two, I hate sports. My dad was a basketball coach, Center Reach High School, 30 fucking years. I grew up in a basketball family. White, five and a half, five and eleven and a half, with bow legs. I'll never be that guy in the bar like tapping his buddy. She that guy at tennis and she's got 73 rebounds. Really? What color is your white size? You don't know that. That's why she blew the mailman on Wednesday. Because she root for imaginary people that don't exist. You see Bronx Tale? Nicky Man will never pay your rent. They don't know you're there. They don't know you're there. What do you say before up here? Kings Park? Was the Kings Park people? Where's Kings Park? Over there? I lived there for five years. San Remo, Lakeview, and Tulip. Up by the Building 82. 92? 92. I grew up in Farmingville. I'm not Mexican, but I grew up in Farmingville. And I dated, I'm Irish, and I dated this Italian girl from Franklin Square, and we got an apartment in Kings Park. So she couldn't find her way there because she's from Nassau. So we went there, we checked the place out, rented it, moved the shit in. Third time she's going there from her job in Williston Park. I'm in Youngstown, Ohio doing comedy. She's like, I can't find the apartment. I only went there with you. You have to talk me in. I'm like, what's this, 1981? My uncle Ralph can make a pencil and write shit in a napkin? This is what you do. McGuire's Comedy Club, click dashboard and you magically appear here boomers it's called a gps it's amazing we don't give verbal directions anymore so they took me in i'm like all right you're my pumpkin i love you I'm so you're alone in the car and someone's like yeah i'm disoriented i'm like yeah i know but the oxygen in the trees and the squirrels out here in suffolk she's like yeah it's like sunken meadow something i'm like all right good pull over on sunken meadow something Get out of the car, walk around, get in the passenger seat. Are you in the passenger seat now? Yeah, good, you should be all set. Because from the passenger seat, you seem to know fucking everything. I fucking hate the guts. Can't believe how many people are here on Sunday. This is amazing, man. You guys are fucking great coming out on Sunday. It must be nice to not have jobs. You come out here and drink seven bourbons and puke in the parking lot. What would you be doing if you weren't here anyway? Watching TV? TV's all over with. They don't even play music on MTV anymore. It's fucking fat pregnant teenagers from Alabama and catfish. What's your alternatives? Reality? Pawn stars? What a great show this is, right? Pawn stars? You take your garbage into your garage or your barn to four fat guys in Las Vegas? The guy in the parking lot is being interviewed. He's very confident. He's a badass and he won't be fucking pushed around. He's like, I'm bringing this thing in here and I want $600,000 fucking dollars. He walks in there, meets Bolt Rick, and everything changes. What do you got? I got the Liberty Bell from Philadelphia, the real Liberty Bell. Me and my, Bob, my buddy Bobby stole it on Tuesday morning and brought it here to you in Vegas. And Rick is such a ripoff. He's like, eh, it's got a crack in it. It's been around a while. I pick up some room in my shop. I'm thinking 700. You know why? He has an expert. His expert is his cousin Jason. His expert on colonial bell making. I huddle in the corner and figure out how to rip this douchebag off. Bing, bang, boom. 700. Write him up. Show him. That's the whole show. I just saved it. 22 minutes of commercials. You can bring him Elvis's Cadillac. $33. He's a Cadillac expert. Best show ever? Hoarders. Love hoarders. I have a genius solution to solve all the hoarders' problems. So, but I, came, I, I came back from Massachusetts this afternoon and I had to go over to, to uh, Poospatuck and get cheap cigarettes, so I drove through Shirley. I think I passed potential seasons 28, 31, 36, 39, and 42. Holy shit, Shirley. 
the, mach the washing machine usually goes inside the fucking house. Not on the gravel driveway next to the 81 Camry with no rims and the weight bench. I have a gene of switch to solve all the horse problems. You, I'm gonna go, you go into the horse house, you throw bags of cocaine and meth and heroin, just sprinkle them everywhere. When they become addicted to the drugs, they'll sell everything in the fucking house and put down. House clean, we put them on intervention A and E, same network of fucking genius. Genius. Where are my married men out here? Go ahead, raise that fucking decree.